Welcome to today's video of Success in Tech. Today we are covering a common coding interview question which you're likely to find at interviews with Google, Facebook or Amazon. Let's get into it. Okay, let's talk about the problem statement. It says, short, shortest range in K sorted lists. You're given K lists which are sorted and you're supposed to find the shortest range where this range covers at least one number of every list. What does that mean? Let's do an example. So in this case, we could look at this and find it out intuitively by seeing 20, 22, and 24. So what would be the range? A range always contains two elements. In that case, the range would be 20 to 24. So we're only talking about integers, of course, and in that case, 20 is in the second list, 21 is in none of those, 22 is in the third list, 23 is in none of them, and 24 is in the upper list. So you can already see this is kind of a min-max situation. And what we're actually trying to do is minimizing this range. So here, uh, the range is just four. Now that we've seen the example, let's try to tackle this problem like in an interview situation. If you see something like this, it may seem a little bit intimidating, but at the same time, it's, it wasn't very hard for a human and some intuition to come up with this solution. We just have to transform it into code. Before you jump into code, try to get a good understanding of the problem and try to formalize the algorithm you have in your head already. So in this case, we are using the fact that it's sorted. So all of the lists are sorted. All right, let's look at the actual algorithm of this. Uh, we're gonna keep track of a pointer in every list, so k pointers. In this case, we're going to call them x, y, and z. Meaning, this is going to be an iterative approach where we step through the lists. And we're looking for the minimum element in each list, uh, the minimum element we are having under each pointer, and the maximum element under each pointer. So at each step, we're going to calculate the range, which is max minus min. And we're going to see if our globally found range um, is uh, bigger than the newly found range. But you'll see what I mean in a second. Um, three pointers. These are current mins and max and range. And we then have, so to say, a global uh, tracking system. Uh, I'm gonna call it the min range. This is what we're most interested in. And because the output of this problem will be uh, the range, meaning the left element and the right element of this min range, uh, we'll also keep track of the actual number uh, of the left side and the right side. I'm going to call the min range min for the smallest two elements. This would be the 20. And the min range max, which would be the right element of the min range, this would be the 24 at the end. So let's get started. 0, 4, and 5. Obviously, the minimum element is 0 and the max is 5. Calculating max minus min, 
uh, will be five. We don't have any values in here, so those will be uh, initialized first with this step. So we're gonna fill them up with this min, uh, this min range, I'm sorry, it's gonna be five. The min range min being the zero, and the min range max being the five. And this was already our first loop iteration. We're gonna do the same again and again. Um, the minimum element uh, is the zero as mentioned, and we're gonna have to move one pointer and we're always moving the pointer, uh, pointing to the minimum of a list. In this case, it's the zero. Now it points to nine, index one. And again, we're trying to find out min, max, and the range. Let's see, we have four, nine, and five. Four is the minimum, uh, nine is the current maximum and the range is again five. Five in this range equals the min range we found so far, so no change, we're gonna keep this like it is. We're only doing a change down here if this range is uh, smaller, so uh, definitely smaller than here. Now it's the same, so no change. And you'll probably see where this is going and I'm gonna speed up things a little bit. Now it's getting more interesting. Uh, we arrived at a point where we are at the last element here and here, not at the last element here yet. Um, 20, 22 and 24, so the min being 20, the max being 24, and we found a range of 4. This is the first time in this uh, complete loop that uh, this range became smaller than the min range we found so far. So now it's time to update this section down here. The min range is now four. The min range min, so the smaller element, is 20 and the bigger one, 24. And again, to make sure we're understanding this right, uh, 20 and 24 uh, cover this element and this element. But because of this list containing the 22, this is actually in the range of 20 to 24. So we have one element of each list uh, containing, uh, or one element of each list is in this result range. So our iteration, our loop is still not completely finished. We have to take one more step and our abort condition is gonna be uh, if one of the pointers um, goes over the length of the of, of, of the list. So we would look at the minimum element like we always do, this is 20, and the iteration would move out of the list. This is our stop condition, we're stopping doing this complete, complete uh, looping, and what we will find at the end of this loop is our end result, which is exactly what we were looking for, 20 to 24, max, the, the, the min range being 4. With the naive approach I showed you, we're stepping through every list uh, one by one with our three pointers. Um, this operation alone uh, would take n steps. So using big O notation, um, we would have an, uh, n amounts of steps, uh, n amount of steps uh, just to step through the list. Um, until we hit this abort condition, which was uh, right here when we stepped out of the list going from 20 uh, to the next element. Um, but there was one more operation we were doing which takes considerable time and has to be reflected in the big O notation. And this was uh, the min and max search at every step of the loop. 
because K can be quite big, this sums up uh, K being the amount of lists we have, because how do we find out the min and the max uh, at each step of the loop? Uh, we are stepping through every element in K. So at each of those steps, at each step going from left to right, we're doing um, a K operation, uh, searching for the min and for the max. And uh, now this is our, so our complete time complexity for the naive approach. Talking about space complexity, um, it's a pretty okay what we're doing here. We were just keeping track of a static amount of uh, variables. So we're talking about a O of one, uh, meaning the amount of variables we were using to keep track of min, max, range, min range, and so on, uh, was not increasing with the problem size. It stayed the same throughout all of the algorithm. So now we know how the naive solution works, and we know about time and space complexity of this naive solution. Um, we should always think about a more efficient solution. Even if there is no time in the actual interview to code up um, the better approach, uh, you can make a lot of points with your interviewer if you just mention um, your thought process about getting to a more efficient solution. Uh, in this case, there is a more efficient solution um, because we already saw that with finding out min and max at each step of the iteration, we're taking k amount of steps. And this is exactly where we can be more efficient if we use a min heap. So what a min heap is, that's a topic for a different video, um, but you can definitely find out yourself. There are lots of good resources out there. The min heap uh, keeps track of our minimum at each step of the iteration. And we would end up with a, a slightly better uh, O notation time complexity. Namely with this one, uh, we would still have n steps going from left to right, but now instead of having k iteration, k steps for each min and max finding, uh, it's going to be only a log of k. That's it for today's video. I hope this was helpful. Please leave questions in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. My name is Roman Lopez and this is Success in Tech.